and this is television. This is television in Britain. I need to live in Britain. You are lighting a car on fire. What's up guys, it is JJ here, back with yet another video, and today we are going to take a look for the first time at another video that was recommended to you guys after one of our Top Gear videos. We took a look at their most offensive moments yesterday, and today we're going to take a look at a different type of moment. I guess one of their more popular specials, or one of the more popular bits that they did uh, for Top Gear. Apparently it's supposed to be extremely entertaining, and a part of a car that my family owns, or owned at that time. A Toyota Hilux. Apparently this is Killing a Toyota Part 1. I think there's like two or three parts to this as well, so let me know if you guys want to see Part 2 and Part 3. Um, I'm kind of excited to take a look at this because I feel like there's many ways to kill a car. It should not be difficult. You can crash it into things. You can blow it up if you wanted to. Obviously they're not going to like rig an explosion and blow it up. Or at least I hope not. But anyway, let's get to the video. You guys let me know your thoughts on this and what other bits, series, specials, anything you guys want to see from Top Gear. I've had an absolute blast taking a look at them. But yeah, let's get into the video. As well, guys, you can find the original video just down in the description below. It is on the BBC Top Gear website, so obviously I'll have to blur it out due to copyright, but apologies for that. Let's get into it. This, I want to make it plain, is not Hollywood. We're not using stuntmen. We're not Dude, it already looks rusty. Computer graphics. We haven't made any mechanical alterations to the car at all. We just picked it up from the farmyard and brought it here. What is what is the what is the prediction here? What is the prediction? He's gonna crash into stuff, isn't it? Oh my goodness, he's taking it downstage. Oh, that was a bit uncomfortable. What? I mean, driving you downstairs probably it's not going to kill it, obviously, but... damaged my spine quite badly doing this. And then it set about damaging Bristol. He's just going to crash it in the face. What's going on? This didn't really hurt it either. Yeah, battery's good, radiator's good. I'll buff out. That's got it. So we left the city centre and went to the seaside. Please tell me he's not going to drive it in the water. Do not I drive it in the water. I've careless driving. <laughs> So I thought I'd try a spot of careless parking. Look what's happened. This is the Severn Estuary, home to the second biggest tide in the world. Brilliant. 40 feet, and it moves at 8 miles. They are really going to leave this car in the middle of the ocean? They're just going to park it in... ...an hour. That's why the RNLI have tethered my car in place. I'm not going to get that out for hours. Damn! 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 The and locals thought it was all a huge laugh. So that's going to drown my car. Oh, yes. Well, when will I be able to get it out again? A few hours. Windscreen's still <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> But then disaster. Oh my, is it actually going? The ropes tying it down had snapped. Yeah, because you put ropes in an ocean. It could be out in the It could be right out in the main channel. You may never see it ever again. You yeah, don't yeah, think you quite got this. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> they really sent divers to go get this truck. Very kindly, they waded out to see if they could find it, but it had gone. And it didn't turn up until the tide had gone out five hours later. On the beach? It's on the beach. You're lying.
The silt had jammed the steering lock and the cylinders were flooded with seawater. It was a wreck. And though we'd brought a mechanic along, we had no spare parts. Things looked bleak. So just hammer, blow some air, screw some things together. Well, the uh, mechanic has worked on it now for 40 minutes or so, I think. And uh, it's not looking good. Seems then that if you want to kill one of these things, the beach, the sea, salt water is the answer. Sorry. Um, wrong. Astonishingly, the Toyota was not dead. I do not believe it! I don't believe it either. That's so good. Right, Look at the sandbar that's still sitting in the truck. Now, let's see if it moves. So it had survived Dude, that the West Country, blow up with him in it. but would it survive our test track? The problem is, what can we do here that we haven't already tried? Dude, you just put it in a... Oh. Difficult one. You put it in an ocean and it survived. I mean, the only I'm solid done. structure we have here is this, the Top Gear production office. And that won't stop it. <laughs> Didn't the windscreen get blown? Are they literally just dry? Who is in this truck that is driving it currently? That it, how are they not hurt? I swear they blew the windscreen out because you could just see the metal bars here. Um, they they filled it with sand. How is it not blowing up? Like if this was GTA, that car's blowing up. Well, obviously we're not stopping the GTA. To no avail. But I've got something much more powerful. The Mistral GT. They just really drop a shit on a car. What do you have to do? That's to not kill gonna stop one? it. Ah. Uh, right. Be a bit undignified. Here we go. Lordy Lord, I'm too old for this. I honestly can't believe this. The steering's fine, the gearbox is fine, the low range box is fine. I don't think it's fine. fine. I don't Even think it's fine. Even the telling me we're doing 30. To give you an idea of just how strong this car still is, look what we've got here. It's used to fell skis. Just gonna hit it with a wrecking ball. But look what happens when you thump it into the car. Well, the day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. But sadly, the car isn't. It survived trial by water, it survived trial by Bristol, and trial by caravan. But now it must face the most difficult trial of them all. Trial by fire. They are lighting a car on fire. And this is television? This is television in Britain. I need to live in Britain. You are lighting a car on fire. Big up. Honestly, on honestly, there's no way it starts. But it's gonna start, because obviously that's TV. It's gonna start. Which I don't get. They have to have had that a separate was car here. Phenomenal. I know. Amazing. Like, be honest, did you really not change any bits? Not a thing, other than the windscreen. Because the C took the windscreen out, we had to put a new one in for driving through our production office, otherwise it would take my head off. So we put a new piece of perspex in, that was it. Other than that, nothing. We just had hammers, spanners, and a bit of WD-40 to get the engine going after the C. All of which makes it more of a shame that in the end you killed it with fire. That was just... Which doesn't make any sense. Well, that's the thing. You probably won't believe this, ladies and gentlemen. I want a huge round of applause. It is still working! <laughs> I'm done. I'm actually done. I don't get this. I don't get this at all.
how you have lit a car on fire and it is still running when I drive over a nail and, and, it, and it rips an axle off and my car is finished. That's insane to me. That's insane. Toyota big up, honestly, for making an indestructible truck. Like, you've made a cheat code to life, essentially. But let me know what you guys think about that. I can see right now, obviously, there's a part two. Let me know if you guys want to check out part two. And I guess if there's a part three. If it's all the same truck, too. Let me know, though. Let me know, though. But thank you guys so much for watching. And peace.